Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you automation items in Reaper Part 2. Now, if you haven't watched my last video on automation items, I'd recommend watching that first, where I show the basic functions of using automation items in Reaper. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the things we didn't get to in that video, and also a few things that have been added in newer versions. So as a quick review, I have an EQ here with a synth. And it sounds like this. And this envelope right here is adjusting a filter with this plugin. So we could automate it right from here. which creates an envelope down here. But we can make this envelope an item. If we go down over here, hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, see how the cursor changes, and I could drag from here to here and create an automation item, which allows us to treat this envelope as an item. We could move it around left and right. We could duplicate it by holding Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and duplicate it over here. Now the way I drew it was freehand, so it's not snapping to the grid. So let's undo that. Let's turn on the grid, and let's do the same thing. Draw it from here. Notice it snaps to the grid, which will give us a perfect size for the automation item, which we can move around and snap it right to the grid. Or if we hold on Shift while we do it, so Alt Shift on the PC, Option Shift on the Mac. And it'll bypass that snapping. So once again, we could do it freehand, even though our grid is turned on. So let's keep it freehand for now. And let's turn off the grid and draw it this way. Now we could also pool our items. So right now, if I duplicate it over to here, it creates a separate item. These two are separate. So if I draw in this one or in this one, they're both unique. If I want them to pool or behave the same way, just add another modifier. On the PC, it's Alt Control. On the Mac, it's Option Command. And if we duplicate it, now they're pooled. So if I adjust this one or this one, they both change together. Great for working in sections, but we want the same automation in both. Now we can also duplicate and pull our items by drawing them. So if I want to pull this one, instead of using the modifiers and dragging it over, I can just make sure it's selected right here. Go over here and hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just draw it. And then it's going to pull the same item over to here. Now they're pulled. Now we could also mute our items. Just right click right here and choose to mute it. So now it's going to play any automation over here or over here, but this item itself is going to be muted. Or we could unmute it the same way. Deselect it. We can also split our items. If I move the cursor right here, make sure I select the item, right click it, and split it. Now I have two separate items, one and two, right here which I can move around completely separately from each other. Or I can put them back together, select them both, and then glue it. Right click it, choose glue. We have one item instead of two. But we could also glue our items instead of side to side on top and bottom. Let me give you an example. If you notice, when we've been duplicating these items, it looks like this. But we can see different items on the top and the bottom. When we deal with items this way, both of the envelopes are going to be used. They're going to be combined. To make this easier to hear, let's delete this one. Let's make one over here that's a square wave. I'll double click it, 
I'll create a square wave right here. Give it a bunch of cycles like this. And now if we move this over to here, it's going to play this envelope and this envelope at the same time. So both envelopes or items are playing back at the same time. And if you want to see the result or combine them, just select them both and then glue that. And this is what the result is going to look like. Let's undo that. And now let's check out our preferences. If we go down here to automation, this section over here is dedicated to automation items. And these are our defaults. The first option over here, we can insert new automation items when we're writing. So instead of writing first, and adding them later, we will do it automatically. So let's delete this one. And let's write some automation. Notice it automatically created this automation item based on the size of what we played. Now, if you want it right in the grid, you could trim it back with the grid turned on but it's going to loop by default. So you first might want to turn off looping right here. Just turn it off. And then we could drag it out to the nearest grid, making it easy to work with. So you can move it around and have it snap to the grid. Or go back to our preferences. We could turn off the second option, loop new automation items by default. If we turn this off and write our envelope, it's not going to loop by default. So I can trim it out to our grid and it's not going to loop. But it's on by default. We could also turn on and off, editing the baseline and amplitude in pulled copies. Let me give you an example. This is off by default. Let's pull this one by selecting it and drawing another right here. This is a pulled copy. If I open up this one by double clicking it and readjust the baseline, they move separately or well, the amplitude. But we can change that right here so they move together. So they kind of behave like a group. We could turn this off, make this lower, and still link them from here. But this is off by default. If you want it on by default, just change the preference right here. Editing baseline and amplitude affects the pooled copies. The next option down here is going to pull the items when we copy and paste them. It's off by default. So if I copy this one and paste it over here, they're separate items. But if I want a pooled copy, when we copy and paste, just turn on this option right here. And we can copy it, paste it over here, and now they're pulled. But again, this is off by default. There's also an option over here, which is on by default, that's going to copy the automation when we copy media items. So if we turn this on and this on, if we copy our items, the automation items are going to go with it and they're going to pull. And the next option is going to remove points from underlying envelopes when creating automation items. So by default, if you create automation items using an action or mouse editing, it'll remove the collected points from the underlying envelope. Or we could leave it off and it won't. Then the last option is going to trim content behind automation items when editing. If we go back, to duplicating this and then dragging it over, both items are going to play by default. But if we don't want that behavior, we want to trim this one as you bring it over, turn this option on over here, then we could drag this over to here. You'll still see both, but when you let go, 
it trims the first one. Same with this side. Bring it over here, and it's going to trim it when we let go. But again, this is off by default. So that's the preferences. Now there's another mode that's been added to automation items. If we go to the options menu, down to automation items, we could choose to bypass underlying envelopes when working with automation items. So if we choose this option, notice right here, there's no envelope. In fact, if I delete this one, there's no envelope at all. But again, I could write one just like this. And it's going to create an item just where we wrote. But there's nothing on the sides. So if I go over here and take it out of touch mode, it's not going to grab the value from here. We can still move it freely. And the same on this side. But when it gets to this item, it's going to jump to the values in this automation item. And then afterwards, it's free again. It's not going to write or play back any particular value. Now, the way we just changed it in the options menu is going to be global. So it's going to affect all the envelopes in the project. If you don't want that, just switch it back right here, unbypass it. And this comes back, and we can just choose it for this envelope. Let's right click over here, automation item options for this envelope. And we can choose right here based on the project, or we can bypass it just for this envelope. So once again, it's completely free over here. And over here, but it's going to perform this item right here. Pretty helpful if you want that behavior. And we can switch it back right here, put it back to the project default behavior, which gives us an envelope in addition to the items. And finally, there's one other thing I want to show you. If we take this automation item, and let's say we love it, we can save it by right clicking it, going to save, give it a name, my favorite automation item. So now we can recall this at any time. So if I delete this, just click right here, right click, automation items, go to load, and we can load that item right here or here. But we could also do that from the Media Explorer. Let's go to the Media Explorer under View, Media Explorer. We can go down over here and find under our Applications, my Reaper, Automation Items, and here's that item we just saved. So I can click anywhere on any envelope, and just import it by double clicking it. Notice we can see the envelope right down here. Just double click it, and it gets inserted right in that spot. So, any way we want it, just double click it, and it inserts it. Or you can right click it, insert it this way, or replace other ones. So, if I have one right here, let's draw one in. And I want to replace it, just select it, right click this one, replace selected automation item, and it replaces it automatically. Or we can replace it and stretch loop it to fit. Or we can even show it in our Explorer or our Finder on the Mac. So that's pretty handy to do it right from this window. So that's pretty much it. That's the automation items part two in Reaper. In some future videos, I'm going to show you some techniques for using automation items for very specific things. So stay tuned. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.